Well, we've come to it. We finally have the last of the devices we saw out in Vegas in January at CES 2020. The Lenovo Chromebook Flex 5 is here. We're ready to unbox it and reacquaint ourselves with this Chromebook that by all measure could be one of the more important Chromebooks of 2020. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of consumers because they're awesome at what they do, and that is keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or out and about. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and get started today. So without further ado, let's hop in the box. This is the Core i3 model, uh, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. There are other configurations coming. Uh, we know Likely there's a Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal NVMe storage, but there's also a step down from this one and a Celeron with also four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. The reason I say that this could be one of the more important Chromebooks of the year is that price point. So we bought this for $409. Um, and for what we're talking here, I mean, you get 10th gen uh, Intel processors, you're getting Wi-Fi 6, you're getting Bluetooth 5, you're getting upward firing speakers, Lenovo's great keyboards, a 300 nit full HD screen, convertible form factor, USI stylus input. So you're getting a bunch of the same stuff that comes with much, much pricier Chromebooks like the Flip C436 and the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. And while this thing's not gonna be quite up to that level of like fit and finish and you know looks and all that stuff, there's something to be said about a affordable, well-made uh, but solid Chromebook uh, because Chromebooks, and I've said this many, many times before, Chromebooks can tend to be these just utilitarian devices. And while it's nice to see devices that have all kinds of bells and whistles and are just sleekly built, and we're so excited about, you know, or I get so excited about the Samsung Galaxy Chromebooks of the world and those types of devices, when it comes down to it, really what most users need and want when they get into a Chromebook is something that's solid, looks pretty good on a desk, and just performs and does so at a decent price. And I think Lenovo is hitting the sweet spot with the Flex 5 in all those categories because ultimately this isn't the lightest Chromebook I've picked up, but it's reasonable. Um, I'm not sure the exact weight of it. And it gives off these uh, Dell Chromebook 13 vibes. So if you've been around for a little while, kind of this uh, trapezoidal bottom here, kind of gives off that same vibe that the, the Dell did and has a big huge uh, vent across the bottom. And that actually feels like it's aluminum down here, which is very cool. It's making a weird sound, hear that? How weird. Uh, anyway, um, but the bottom does definitely feel like it's aluminum because I don't think you get that kind of sound off of uh, plastic. Uh, definitely an aluminum top here. Let's look, make sure there's nothing else hiding in this box besides a cable. Yep. So. Pretty classic uh, Chromebook unboxing here, brown box, you know, nothing to get excited about. And again, that's kind of the draw of this device is that it's, um, it's a Chromebook that is hitting on all the right things and not trying to sacrifice the, the value, like the, the price point here. So I can just tell you from the outside, again, it's utilitarian looking. It doesn't look like amazing, but it also looks nice. I mean, you know, it's it's slim enough, it's portable enough, it doesn't feel crazy heavy. Uh, lots of fan ports because you know it's an i3, it's a, a full-blown U-series i3, so it's gonna be plenty fast from a performance standpoint. And that's that's interesting. I've never seen this. Um yeah, it's a product registration thing, so sure. Um, just never seen that in a Chromebook. Um, oh, I forgot all about this. So you actually get uh, a security feature up here on the camera. There's a physical slider that allows you to actually slide the camera closed and open. So for all of you out there that like to put tape over that webcam and know for sure that it's you know covered up and, and not giving anything away, there is a, uh, a nice sliding mechanism there. That's, that's pretty cool. I've totally honestly forgot. Because again, and I wrote about this on the website, uh, I, I don't want to underplay this. I shrugged this device off in Vegas. Um, it was there. Uh, Lenovo was nice enough to actually get it out. They weren't even going to show it. They got it out and gave it to us and let us kind of get hands on. Uh, Gabriel did a video about it and he was pretty excited about it out in Vegas. And I honestly, I was so enamored with the Samsung and the Asus and then the, you know, Lenovo's own tablet and the Duet that I was just kind of like, uh -huh, yeah, it's a, you know, a, a nice Chromebook. Great. Um, and I wasn't really seeing exactly what was going on here. And again, it comes back to that price. I mean, 
I'm opening this up and telling you right now, like the whole thing just feels solid. I mean, it just feels nice and it feels, I can't tell what the material is here. It might not be aluminum on the bottom part, uh, but it's a good feeling material. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic. So that's something. Key travel feels great. And that's not surprising either because Lenovo ultimately makes good keyboards. Um, this one should be backlit, but we have upward firing speakers going on here. Uh, we've got this just really handsome look overall. I mean, the device just looks good. And, and that's something when you talk about a $400 Chromebook, a lot of times we'll get them out and they just, they feel like junk. Definitely not a, a glass trackpad. It's a little humid where we're filming here right now. And so usually I can tell if it's humid, my hands are a little clammy. Uh, glass doesn't matter. You know, an etch glass trackpad is nice and smooth. This one feels like it's dragging a little bit. That's uh, just par for the course for other materials on a trackpad. That being said, the click mechanism feels great. The thing's not flopping around. Um, yeah, so initial impressions, um, pretty good here. Uh, we're gonna cut away real quick. I'm gonna at least boot it up and see what the screen looks like and maybe hear what these speakers sound like because we didn't uh, get a good idea of what those sounded like out in Vegas. So give us just a second. Okay, so we've got this thing up and running and another thing that I wasn't quite sure if it would come over from the one we saw in Vegas was backlights on the keys. Uh, so that's all there. Uh, bleed is pretty good, but look at the screen on this thing. I mean, it is bright. Again, we're under studio lighting and there's a lot of times where I'm, I might even be blowing the shot out here. Um, there's a lot of times where we, um, end up having to adjust lighting in order to make the screen not look so terrible. Um, and this thing is just standing up really well, uh, to this lighting. Obviously, you know, this is a convertible form factor, you know, you know, is this going to be something you're going to use as a tablet all the time? Absolutely not. But when you need to flip it in tablet mode and do some writing on it, it supports a USI stylus. We actually just saw today that Lenovo's USI stylus uh, just passed through the FCC. So uh, it's going to be something that will be available pretty soon for use on this device. But you know, if you're on a plane or something, you want to use tent mode, that kind of thing. This, this obviously does that. Lenovo is the one that pioneered uh, 360 degree devices. So it obviously works quite well on here but I, the screen looks great. It makes me think so much of the Pixelbook Go, which is one of those screens that's good. It's just a good screen. It's not the best screen I've ever seen, but it by far is not the worst screen and it's not gonna detract from your overall use case and your experience here. The viewing angles look really nice. Uh, and again, this is just this handsome, good feeling Chromebook that that ticks so many boxes. Um, you know, obviously we're gonna get into, in the review, uh, we'll get into performance, but a Core i3, even the Celeron with this U-Series, the 10th gen, you're not gonna have any issues with performance. So don't hold out for the i5 unless you're holding out for that uh, upgrade in the storage or the RAM department. But overall, this thing, like I said, it just gives off these Dell Chromebook 13 vibes to me. And that was one of my favorite Chromebooks ever made. Uh, you're getting USB type C on both sides that does output and, for video, uh, data, all that kind of stuff, USB type A over here, micro SD card slots. If you wanna expand that 64 gigs of storage, it's in here. But what I have to say more than anything is this does not feel like a $400 Chromebook, not at all. And again, my review may come up with some, some issues where we're saying, hey, you know what? Yep, 400 bucks, there's some real issues with this thing and, and there's some problems with it. But just unboxing it, getting my hands on it again, it's been months since we've seen this device. I'm telling you, the fit and finish on this thing is way better than a $400 Chromebook deserves to be. And so here we go with Lenovo again. They did this with the Duet as well. You have a device that's in this price bracket that it feels like it doesn't even belong in. And I think that's why, because of all the stuff packed into this Chromebook, this is gonna become one of those ones that's so easy for us when people are looking for a mid-range Chromebook to go, yeah, just get, get the flex because it does pretty much everything you're gonna to wanna to do. Some of you watching this are going, well, it's missing one thing. Yes, biometric support is not here. It won't be here on any versions of this device. So if at the end of the day, that's one of the things that you need more than anything. Yeah, it's not gonna offer that. But for people that have used the Pixelbook Go or some other devices that don't have it either, You've probably already figured out workarounds to log into your device in quick ways. It, it doesn't matter that much. And again, for everything you're getting here for $409, this already feels like a crazy deal. But I, obviously, we're going to spend some time reviewing this thing. We'll get our full review and full thoughts in a couple weeks together and get that video out. So if you are not already subscribed, go down there and hit subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when that video and other videos like it come out. While you're down there, hit that like. 
And if you'll hit the join button, you can see all the cool stuff that our members get like custom emojis and behind the scenes footage. But that's it for this one, guys. Till next time, we'll see you.